Hey everyone, welcome back to Walk and Study. Today we will be covering some common words you're likely to hear or read in American or other English language news outlets. For today's lesson, we have pulled all of our words from the New York Times. While going over these words, we will be walking in the Kuzgunjuk neighborhood of Istanbul, Turkey. Some of the words we will cover have more than one meaning, but we will focus on the meaning that's relevant for the specific headline we review. But if you have any additional questions about a word, please make sure to ask them in the comments and we can try to help you out. Okay, let's get started. Our first word is unfazed. Unfazed is an adjective and it means not feeling anxiety or concern. Our headline from the New York Times is Britons unfazed by high infection rates weigh their price of freedom. So this headline is saying that British people who are not feeling concern or anxiety about the high coronavirus infection rates are weighing or considering the price of freedom. And in this instance, the freedom the headline is talking about is the freedom from restrictions put in place to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Okay, our next word is proliferation. Proliferation is a noun, and it means a rapid increase in numbers or a rapid increase in growth. Our headline from the New York Times is, The proliferation of toxic plastics and chemicals must end. So this headline is saying that the rapid increase in the numbers of toxic plastics and chemicals must end. Our next word is possessions. Possessions is a plural noun, and it means items of property or things belonging to someone. Our headline from the New York Times is, Al Capone's possessions, now for sale, show two sides of the gangster. So, this headline is saying that the things or items that once belonged to the American gangster Al Capone are now for sale, and they show more of the gangster's real character or identity. Hmm, okay, our next headline has two good words. The first word is nostalgic. Nostalgic is an adjective, and it means emotional about the past or kind of sentimental. Our next word is pragmatism. Pragmatism is a noun, and it means an attitude of dealing with things realistically and in a way that is based on practical rather than theoretical ideas. Our headline from the New York Times is Ronaldo's return to Manchester United is nostalgic pragmatism. So this headline is saying that Cristiano Ronaldo's return to Manchester United is the result of very practical and realistic thinking that is also at the same time a little emotional about the past or sentimental. Okay, our next word is burnout. Burnout is a noun, and it means the physical or mental collapse caused by overwork or strain. Our headline from the New York Times is, Doctors facing burnout turn to self-care. So this headline is saying that doctors who are facing physical or mental collapse caused by overwork are focusing more on self-care to counteract the effects of overwork. Okay, our next headline has three great words. Our first word is vivid. Vivid is an adjective, and it means making powerful feelings or strong, clear images in the mind. Our next word is varied. Varied is an adjective, and it means including a number of different types or elements. And our last word is tableau. Tableau is a noun, and it means a graphic description, representation, or scene. Okay, now let's get to the headline itself. 
Our headline from the New York Times is... In William Maxwell's fiction, a vivid, varied tableau of Midwestern life. So this headline is saying that in William Maxwell's fiction writing, one finds a graphic description or representation of life in the Midwestern region of America that creates strong emotions and images in the mind and also includes many different elements or aspects of Midwestern life. Okay, our next word is deflect. Deflect is a verb and it means to cause something to change direction after hitting it or exerting some force on it. Our headline from the New York Times is, Deflecting an asteroid before it hits Earth may take multiple bumps. So this headline is saying that in order to cause an asteroid to move direction by hitting it or bumping it, we may have to hit it not just once, but multiple times. All right, our next word is qualification. Qualification is a noun, and it means an attribute or accomplishment that makes someone appropriate for a particular job or activity. Our headline from the New York Times is Experience, Education, Vaccination, the new qualifications for job seekers. So this headline is saying that being vaccinated is now an accomplishment, along with experience and education, that makes people looking for jobs appropriate for a particular job or activity. This headline is actually pointing out that more and more companies are hiring workers based not only on how experienced and educated they are, but on whether or not they're vaccinated. Okay, our next word is discipline. Discipline is a verb, and it means to train someone to follow rules or expectations around behavior by using punishment. Our headline from the New York Times is, Calls grow to discipline doctors spreading virus misinformation. So this headline is saying that more and more people are calling to have doctors who make false statements or tell lies about the coronavirus punished so that they will stop making those false statements. Our next word is raucous. Raucous is an adjective, and it means making or made up of very harsh and loud and unpleasant noises. Our headline from the New York Times is, Chinese celebrity culture is raucous. Authorities want to change that. So this headline is saying that Chinese celebrity culture is made up of or often makes very harsh and unpleasant noise and Chinese authorities would like to change this. Our next word is infiltrate. Infiltrate is a verb and it means to enter or gain access to a place or organization slowly or secretly and usually with the goal of stealing secret information. Our headline from the New York Times is How the Delta Variant Infiltrated an Elementary School Classroom. So this headline is saying that the news article will look at how the Delta variant of the coronavirus slowly and secretly entered an elementary school classroom. In this example, though, the part of the definition about stealing secret information doesn't really apply because obviously a virus is not capable of stealing secret information. Okay, our last word is protocol. Protocol is a noun, and it means a set of rules for behavior in a group, organization, or situation. Our headline from the New York Times is... U.S. Open tightens protocols. Fans must provide proof of COVID vaccination. So this headline is saying that the U.S. Open tennis tournament is tightening or strengthening its rules for behavior at the tournament, and one of the new rules is requiring fans to prove that they have received the COVID-19 vaccine. 
All right, with that, we've gone over some common and advanced vocabulary you might find in American or English-speaking news outlets. I hope this lesson was helpful to you all. As always, subscribe below, give us a like if you found this video useful, and let us know in the comments section what else you'd like to learn about or see in our next walk and study lesson. Thanks everyone, take care.